guys i'm finally back from my vacations and i want to answer sophia's question that she has here the first one is would it be possible for you to explain how to have a drop down component that is in a table so it's repeated in all rows and use and it each should be updated individually so i'm pretty sure for those who are familiar with interactive components already know how to do this so i'm going to do this at the end rather i'm going to tackle this particular thing also if you have a drop down that is a filter is it possible to change the rows in the table to only show the rows that have the selected filter so i'm going to actually be doing this using variables which is going to be obviously helpful for people who are uh, familiarizing themselves with variables even though if you've seen my variables video you probably should know how to do something like this but I mean, let's get into it. So the first thing, even if we wanted to do something like that without variables, we can obviously just easily go. And first of all, like I can just show what I have here. So I have a drop down component that basically is a search bar or something. You click on it. Uh, we want something like this to open. When we click on each particular item, we want the items to be uh, displayed according to the option that we've clicked on. So first of all, I'm just going to link this to the, proto uh, the prototype. So I'm going to say, if I, let's say, click on this, I want you to open this overlay right below uh, this particular input. So I'm just going to have it somewhere here and it's going to open. And then I'm going to say something needs to happen when I click on any of these items. And I can now go here to do that. So one easy way in which we were doing this previously before variables was duplicating the screen. So we would duplicate the screen or we would create uh, components with different variants and we would say, okay, if a person clicks on a car, what we want to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and manually disable all the, all the options here and I'm just gonna have the car. And this particular option is going to be linked to this. So now if we just play it, if I click on this and if I click on car, we have something like this, right? So this is exactly what we used to do previously. But now if you want to do something other than that and actually use variables and make it dynamic, what we can do is we can do a bunch of things. So the first thing that we would do is we would create our variables, which obviously aren't created here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new collection because I obviously don't want to confuse it with any of the other collections that I've already created in this file. And I'm going to say this is going to be filter vehicles or something along those lines. So that's the name of my collection. I'm going to go ahead and add a bunch of Boolean values. I'm going to say the Boolean value for the car is going to be on by default. Then I'm going to add another Boolean value, which is going to be, I don't know, something like um, a bus, which is also going to be on by default and another Boolean value, which is going to be bike and that's going to be on by default as well so this is just one way of doing it but there are other multiple ways of doing it as well so now that i have that i'm basically just going to go ahead and i'm going to close this variables thing i'm going to go here i'm going to select all the cars here i'm going to go to my layer i'm going to right click it and i'm going to link it to the car in the filter vehicles thing i'm going to go select the buses that i have so these two are the buses i'm going to link them to the bus and these two are bikes, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to link them to the bike. So now all of these things are linked. Now what we want to do here is anytime a person clicks on the car, what we want to do is we want to, let's say, do an interaction. So on click, we want to set a variable and that variable is going to be what? It's going to actually, let's say, change uh, or interact with some of the other variables. So it's going to change the bus variable to false and that's it and then it's also going to do an, an additional thing it's going to we're going to say we're, it also needs to set another variable and it's going to set that variable which is going to be the bike to false so now that we've done both of these things we can actually just see that in action so if anytime i click on this and i click on let's say a car all of that is going to be disabled and i'm only going to have the car here similarly i obviously don't want the drop down to be open so i'm going to say that the drop down should also close so now if we go here and i'm going to click on the car the drop down is obviously going to disappear and i'm just going to have the car similarly i can do the same thing with clicking on any of these uh, different items and do the bike thing or the bus thing or anything actually let's just go ahead and actually do it so the first thing that I'm going to do in order to simplify it, I'm just going to copy this interaction on the right. I'm going to go here, I'm going to paste it. And the only thing that I'm going to go here and do is I'm going to change this uh, bus to a, which item are we clicking on? So we're clicking on a bike, so the bus can remain. Uh, the bike can actually change to the car and that's it. So now if we have a look at it, refresh, and if we click on the bike, only the bikes remain and all of the other items disappear automatically. So this is an easy way for us to do something which the which Sophia actually wanted us to do here. Uh, what else do we want to do? Mm, all. So obviously for the all interaction, what we want to do is we want to enable everything. So I'm just going to go here, paste this interaction. 
I'm gonna say the variable, the bus, everything is just gonna be true. So I'm gonna say this particular thing is actually gonna be true. And here, this is also gonna be true. And then I'm gonna add another set variable value here, set variable, which is gonna be our car. And I'm gonna say that one is also going to be, actually car is already added. Bike is not added. So I'm gonna say the bike is going to be true. And I think that should be it. So now if you want to see everything, we can just click on all and we're going to be able to see everything. So this is how you basically create a very simple filter component that can be dynamic using uh, variables that we just talked about. So now for the first part of Sophia's question, how would it be possible for us to explain how to have a drop down component? So I'm just going to do this quickly. If you guys want to leave, definitely go ahead. One thing that I do want to mention is I actually am on Twitter right now. Here it is like I've opened my messaging. So if any of the videos that I basically created, you have any confusion on that, have any questions directly, just send me a message directly on Twitter. My messages are open as well. So Twitter is going to be a place where I'm going to be replying more frequently than YouTube, than LinkedIn or whatever. And I'm trying to build an audience there as well. So definitely follow me on Twitter for more valuable stuff and my thoughts on different things. And yeah, just contact me there. Okay, so now coming to Sophia's other question, which is about like interactive components, I'm just gonna quickly do it. And I'm just gonna use the same component. Well, we don't even have it as a component here, but I'm gonna use the same thing here. So here we have an input with label. I'm just going to place it here. We have a menu. I'm just going to place it here as well. And I'm basically going to, first of all, group both of these things and I'm going to create a component. So this is our drop down sample. And I am going to go ahead and create a new variant here. So one thing that I usually like to do when I'm creating components, as many of you know, who've seen my design system videos is I just want to make the whole component with a bunch of variants and auto layout that does not have any impact on the component itself. It's just for me to see things side by side or position them accordingly. So I'm going to give this a fill and I don't want this in the default state. So this is the default state. This is the on state or open state, right? And here, what I want to do is I'm just going to say that if a person clicks on this drop down, it should go to this state, which is basically, which basically means that it's going to open this. And what we want to do here is this is, I'm just going to duplicate these three times. This is going to be our car. This is going to be our bike. And this one is going to be our bus. Pretty simple, right? And what we want to do here is we obviously don't want the drop downs here. I don't think those are needed. And well, I guess those can be needed. Maybe those can be needed. Actually, let me see if they're needed. So we have, uh, I don't think they are needed in this particular instance. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete them here. I don't need them in this state. This should just be say car. This should say bike and this should say bus, which is pretty okay. I'm going to go ahead and remove the auto layout now, and I'm just going to move things at the bottom. So now obviously we want other, um, uh, states available as well that if I click on a car the drop down should open up and stuff along those lines so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to duplicate this and this is going to be our car actually we need two properties now in this variant so I'm just going to go ahead the first property is going to be whether it's like open or closed then we have another variant property that's going to be um, actually we can make this open or closed. so open uh, we're going to say by default it's going to be false and this one is false. This one should be on or true. So you can obviously use on and off as well. All of these should be false. Okay, that's done. And we're just going to move this at the bottom. So I'm going to move this at the bottom so that I have all of the open states together. Let's just move this here. I'm going to basically then duplicate this, this. So this is one, this is two, and this is three. So this one is a bus. So I'm just going to say this one is a bus. This one is a bike. This one is a car. In this state, obviously, we're going to have the car, we're going to have the bike, and we're going to have the bus. And a few other things that we actually need is, first of all, we're going to say that if a person clicks on all, it should go back to this. If a person clicks on car, and unfortunately, we have the click handler, so I'm just going to remove the click, and then I'm going to add it. So this one is going to go to the car. This one is going to go to, so the previous one was going to all, this one is going to the car. This one is going to go to the bike and I'm just gonna change that to on click. This one is going to go to the bus and this is also going to be on click. Okay, so that's pretty much done. 
Uh, and all of these things should be linked now. So let's just go ahead and actually, and let's see if this is linked. Yeah, this seems to be linked. I'm gonna copy this menu and I'm gonna replace all of these three menus because I have already linked all of those prototype interactions. So let's see if these are linked now. So everything is linked and it's all good. But in the car, basically, I want this to be selected. So I just want that to be visible. And this option should also be selected. So this is just like fine tuning that I'm doing to identify which option is selected. And in the all option, obviously the all thing is going to be selected. Okay, so now that we have that done, let's just see how this looks. So I'm gonna create Actually, I'm just going to create an empty frame. I'm going to move this drop down here. So one drop down, two drop down, three drop down, and maybe four drop down. And this one is just going to be a drop down flow. I'm going to click on this to see it. Actually, I just want to see it on full screen. So let's just go ahead and see it here. So if we click on this, we have the all selected. We can click on car and now car is selected. If we go here, we can select bike. We can select bus. If we go here, we can select bus again. Now, if we click on this, obviously nothing is happening because we want it to open, but obviously we did not link it. So I'm just gonna say, if I click on this input, it should open, click open to this. If we click on this input, it should open here. If we click on this input, it should open here. And the reason why I've basically done all of these things separate, so car, so one thing that I've noticed is, and that's, I think, a mistake. So if I click on car, as you can see, this select option is no longer visible. And why is that? So one other thing that we need to do is when we're basically going through these items, I'm just going to select all of these states. So let's just select this one. Let's select this option and let's select this option. So there's click happening everywhere. I'm just going to say reset component state. So now if we go here, I'm going to click on car. As you can see, that's car. So that car is visible. If I click on bike, the bike is visible. If I click on bus, everything's visible. Here I can have the car. Here I can have, I don't know, the bike. And everything's working fine. We have the selected state here as well. And yeah, that's basically how you go ahead and create separate components that behave individually of each other. Obviously, if this was using variables, uh, it would only work for a single component because it would be scoped to the whole file and stuff along those lines. But if you want to have, let's say, if you have unique variables or unique drop downs that are different from each other, then you can probably use variables to accomplish something like this. But I felt like this was more um, reasonable for a interactive component because if you have this particular type of a drop down, you can actually publish it in a library. You don't need it to be connected to the variables in the file and stuff along those lines. So that's gonna be pretty much it. Hopefully this helps you, Sophia. And yeah, just hit the like button, hit subscribe and do get in touch and follow me on Twitter and I'll see you guys there. Take care, bye.